Welcome back. It is going to be yet another busy day. Let's bring in Mike Apple, who's standing by with the world of business. Mike, as we look at world events, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, where do we begin with the markets? Um, yeah. So, so uh, no, I'll let you take it away because there's so many different angles here. Well, look, the uh, markets are down in the early going this morning, Melanie, as uh, you might expect them to be after a weekend where we saw sanctions ratcheted up against Russia. The uh, various sectors of the global economy, whether it is travel or the banking industry, airlines, energy trade, all of these things being affected by what's going on here. And um, we're watching extreme market reaction and huge swings on an on a, on a daily basis, look, keep in mind, last week, what did we see? A sell-off Thursday and one of the biggest recoveries of the year so far on Friday with the Dow on Friday up more than 800 points. This morning, the Dow Jones is back down, on a, at least in the early signals. I want to keep stress that because, again, things move on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, specifically on the market reaction to this uh, geopolitical crisis. And we're watching right now the Dow Jones futures down 375 points. That's a big number. It's not, um, you know, historically speaking, anything that would necessarily uh, point to, uh, to anything that uh, massive. The price for oil, it was above $100 a barrel last week, briefly. Then it dropped by more than 10% in a single day. This morning, it's back up. Uh, north of $96. So, Melanie, it's it's just, you know, when you've got the uh, the West shutting off parts, not all, of that swift interbanking communication system from Russia, uh, banning flights from Russia mm -hmm. or to the country, the energy trade. Russia is a dominant player in the energy market. So far, that component of its economy has not yet hit hit by sanctions. So the price for oil maybe is not as high as it perhaps could be. So, again, it's it's extremely volatile, and anyone's real guess to see where things will go on a day-to-day -day basis. My goodness, no trading on the Russian stock market and no, the ruble. Let's no. talk about that. The ruble dropped today uh, by as much as 30%, and Russia's central bank did raise its overnight lending rate to 20% to avoid a run on the banks. Does that Will that necessarily work? Maybe, maybe not, because we're hearing a lot of anecdotal reports about uh, businesses in Russia demanding U.S. dollars up front for payment. They're worried about the credit card system being shut off at some point and the ruble devaluing by the moment. So when you look at it from an ec economic standpoint, what uh, Vladimir Putin has done to his economy, it has basically, you know, it's, it's on the verge of collapse. How he pays the military, I have no idea at this point. Uh, he does have a massive uh, holding of gold, reportedly, in the hundreds of billions of dollars. So maybe that's uh, one of the, the, the ways to stabilize things. But again, uh, Russia's economy of everything is actually being hit the hardest from, from this entire incident. Uh, let's talk about what you're going to be watching come Wednesday. Uh, you mm -hmm. predicted it, as did many analysts, come Wednesday that interest rate hikes should go up. Uh, is that still the case? Yes. Uh, the market is actually the, the key predictor of, of these things because we can see what the uh, the bond trade is signaling when it comes to interest rate policy. And right now it is signaling an absolute surety that the Bank of Canada will be raising interest rates by a quarter of 1%. They've basically been telegraphing this for weeks now. And if they weren't to uh, follow through, it would be uh, something uh, you know, that would be completely sort of, well, not necessarily off the radar, considering everything that's going on right now, but there is no real reason why they shouldn't raise interest rates uh, this week. And then, of course, see where things stand shortly thereafter. We'll also hear from the U.S. Federal Reserve, uh, some signals from uh, Bank of uh, the U.S. Fed uh, Chair Jay Powell. He's got actually two days of testimony coming up in Washington to the U.S. Senate Banking Committee. And we'll obviously be talking about the economic implications of Russia and Ukraine on the global economic uh, financial system. Um, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's really a, a signal for interest rate policy watchers. But, yes, we can expect interest rates, borrowing costs to go up, I think, for the first time in five years mm -hmm. it's going to be come on Wednesday morning. My goodness. All right. You're a busy man. We shall let you go, yep. Mike. Uh, we'll check again same time tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Take care.